A good morning, a good evening, and a good afternoon, everyone. Chris Petri here. Let's talk technique. Let's get right into it. Um, techniques with your watercolor brush are really important. Um, as a watercolor artist, I say let's learn as many techniques as we can. And then by learning new techniques, we can keep what we like and the ones that we don't like to use too much. We don't have to really um, use them in our in our painting and, and watercolors that much. Um, it is sometimes you'll find if you learn a technique and you're really not too fond of it sometimes it will come in handy if you try painting in a year or two later and you might say wow I remember that technique I learned like a couple years ago it'll work good with this painting that I'm trying to do because sometimes you might not always paint the same paintings does that make sense uh, sometimes someone might ask you to create a painting for them and it might not be something that you paint all the time like subject matter wise and you might say all right, I haven't painted this subject matter too much. How am I going to do this? Oh, that's right. I tried that technique like two years ago um, from a painter I saw uh, that I follow, and they did that type of painting, and that's the technique technique they used. So this is why I say technique um, is really important. Try to learn as many as you can, but stick with the ones that you like. That's the thing too. As a watercolor artist, you know, please stick with the uh, with the techniques you enjoy, and that will get you the best looking painting that you want to create. So um, uh, I'm a big believer in um, techniques in watercolor and using the techniques that you find are going to get you the results on the paintings that you want to create. So if you want to create, um, let's say, very water saturated looking paintings, watercolor paintings with tons of water, then you're going to use techniques of someone that paints that way. Um, and that, that might be a specific artist you might like or two that do a lot of really lots of water on their, their paper and maybe you like artists that don't use as much water and um, maybe are a little more detail oriented in their paintings and don't have as much water and that's fine too. So whatever you like to do, I say the way to get your results for your watercolor paintings is to definitely key in on the techniques that you see artists using. And if you follow those same techniques and perfect them, then you'll get the results you want. And you'll definitely be much happier as you paint and, and create your paintings. So here, I'm going to do a couple of techniques that I use all the time. And you probably see me use them in my videos. And I don't necessarily really talk about them if I'm painting a, a painting. If we're doing like a, an exercise where we're creating a painting of uh, maybe a, a farm scene or a cityscape or some flowers. I might not talk about my techniques. I'm just kind of doing them. And you might see them on the video as I'm painting, but this video I wanted to take the time out just to kind of show you what I'm doing technique-wise with my brush, my water, my paints. And this way um, you might have more of an insight as to the way that I go about um, kind of balancing all of my um, techniques with water, paint, and uh, my brushes and, and so forth. So um, here I'm just going to bring up a few things that I know are definitely really um, important. Uh, one is a, a good water bucket with fresh, clean water. Um, I always have a, a, a two or three of these on hand at all times, and then I'll just, if one bucket of water gets, uh, you know, a little muddy, the water, I just, I keep another container of water always in my studio, and I just pour the water in and get some fresh water. So fresh, clean water is always good to have, and I, I always say if you can change your water maybe once every 15, 20 minutes when you're painting or every half an hour. Um, this way you're always going to have fresh, clean water. Um, another thing with um, the technique of um, controlling water, paint, and, and uh, the brush is a uh, sponge. Sponge is great to have if you can have this next to your table. Um, you keep a sponge next to your table as you're painting. Let's say you're going to keep all your paints and water bucket on your right side. Some artists like to work with all of their paints and everything on the right side. I tend to like my paint on the right and my water on the uh, my paint on the left and my water on the right um, or in front of me the water in front of me usually so I put the water in front uh, of my palette of my uh, paper but in any case that's another um, I'll probably do a video on soon on the, the techniques of setting up our pay our paper our palettes how we handle setting up a palette. I'll do um, a video that, you know, kind of touches on the set, your overall setup. But this this particular video, I just wanted to quick do a nice um, um, 
video on water and, and paint ratio. So with watercolor, probably one of the key factors is, I'm going to change my brush around here. One of the key factors is, of course, the brush you use. This is a round Kalinske Sable brush. It's a um, um, Da Vinci Maestro. So this is natural hair. Holds really good amount of water in, in the um, brush. Um, synthetic brushes. So this is a round brush. Synthetic round brushes will hold less water. So this one holds a really good amount of water, which is kind of nice. It really works good with watercolors. Synthetics also work too. Um, but a round brush with a good point, that's really all we need. And then the, the basic idea is when we're going into to our water, we're going to check off a little water onto the sponge and then go into our palette and dip our brush into the west wet moist paint. And then we have a nice, beautiful um, vibrant color. We do the same thing. We clean the brush off, check off some of the paint on the sponge, and we go into the fresh paint. And we can get some more uh, nice rich uh, color, dark tonal values. Let's say this is water. Again, we go into the water, swish, you know, swish it around the brush. Then we check a little bit of water off on the sponge. You can also use a tissue. So a tissue is your next um, way to check some water off your brush. If you want to take off a little more water, the sponge takes off a fair amount of water. A tissue will definitely dry the brush and take a, more water even yet out of the brush. And then you can go in and maybe, uh, maybe sometimes you'll work out a little bit of paint on the palette first. So here this could be some water we're doing and so we get a nice consistent we get nice consistent paint on our paper. We we control the we control the tonal values like the dark the darker colors and the lighter colors by um, thinning out the paint on the palette. That's one way to do that. But of course, the um, amount of water on your brush is going to be a big factor. So if you can work with your brush, check off a little bit of water, then go to your palette to get your paint. you will be able to have more control of your washes. And, and again, that's because we, we're checking off that water and we're controlling how much water is in our brush. Now, if you want to go with more water, let's say we want to go with um, a little more water, a more watery look to, uh, let's say, the, let's say the sky color maybe. Then we can go with extra water in our palette. And then we can get that watery look of that beautiful look that watercolor is known for with the lots of water. And then as we paint, we're letting all that water out of the brush with the with the paint. And then as we go, we can do those finer lines just naturally because we've already sort of used the paint and water out of our brush. And then, so that's another technique is keeping a, an idea of your brush and how much water you have on the brush. So I've seen artists um, do this at times where an artist might have another piece of paper off to the side of their painting and they might if they wanted to 
they wanted to paint some of these fine lines here, they would load their, they would check, you know, clean the brush, they would check some of the water off, they would go in, and then they might take some of the water off their brush on a piece of paper, then, then go in and do those fine lines. So that's another way you can control your amount of water on your brush too, is by having another bit of watercolor paper next to your paint, where you're painting, next to your um, watercolor paper that you're painting on, and you can just take some water off that way by just going onto the watercolor, uh, going onto the paper. So you would, if you're painting here and this is your painting, and you want to take check some water off, and maybe you were you loaded up your brush and you're working and you're like, oh, I need to check some water off quick. You can do that too. You can go on the paper, keep that paper handy, and then you can go on that and take some water off. Then you can go in and get some of those finer lines. And that works too. So that's a great way to check water as well, is on another separate piece of paper. And you wouldn't, you probably wouldn't use a fancy, really good piece of watercolor paper uh, to check your water on. You might use um, printer paper, let's say. You could have a piece of printer paper or two near your workstation where you're working. And then, you know, you check some water off on that and then go to your painting. That's another way, like a quick way to do it if you have already loaded your brush with, with paint and you said, oh, I... I want to do this one section, I forgot. That's easy. A couple taps on that paper over there, and then you come to your painting, and then you already have a dry, drier brush, and then you're able to control how much water you have on your, your painting and, and the detail of how you're working in the section that you might be working on. So that's a really big help. So in essence, um, this is a, you know, a quick video um, on controlling the amount of water in your brush, and it's really can be a tremendous uh, help um, in your technique of, of watercolor painting. Uh, and, and another um, idea is with um, with um, controlling the water in the brushes. If if you're going to do a really dark tonal value, or let's say you have something here that you want to make really dark, you know you would definitely take off a really a substantial amount of water. And then let's say you wanted to go with um, maybe some gold color here. Then you could go like that. Maybe that's some sand. And you can so let's say that's a sand kind of look. So you have some sky, some ocean, some waves. And then you have some sand here. And then here, let's say you want to bring the sand down a little further. And you want to make it really light, barely noticeable in color. Then, then you can take the water and, and leave it in the brush. Maybe just tap a little bit of water off. And you can go in there and do that as well. And then you just make more of a lighter sand color, let's say. So here, if we're doing a sort of an ocean or a beach type scene, you know, you can get all the variations of tonal value you need in your painting and the amount of paint ratio with water. You can get all those variations by just keying in on the technique of how much water is actually in your brush and how much paint's in your brush and just um, practicing small compositions like this will kind of help you to um, kind of perfect that technique of knowing when you need to have your brush a little drier with less water, when you might want it a little, like for, for here we said we wanted a more watery looking sky. Well, hey, Corey, we got that. We accomplished that by not checking off much water on our brush. We just used basically our brush and we mixed a lot of paint and water and we got that look that we wanted. Then when we got to this area here, we said, wow, we want to use a lot of paint, a lot of pigment two paint right there, nice moist juicy two paint. We wanted to use that here to get those really beautiful darks. Well then here we checked off a lot of water and we just went straight into the paint without watering it down whatsoever. And then we were able to get that nice fine look we're looking for with nice dark tonal values. And then again we left more water in our brush when we got to this point here where we wanted a lighter look in our water. Maybe that shallow water look with some uh, Viridian Green and uh, 
we got that accomplished too by leaving more water in our brush. And then here we're doing the sand and uh, we added very little water to start with here and then we decided to make it a lot lighter going down this way. So then we added some uh, um, we added some a lot more water to the brush and just kind of used the paint we had on here and brought that down to make it a nice light sand look. So you really can accomplish a lot with just that idea of how much water is in my brush, how much paint's in my brush. Um, whatever you're looking to do, do I need to do I need to mix do I, do I need to mix a lot of water in my well? Puddly water? Or do I just need to dry off my brush a lot and then go straight into my paint? And do that. So if you can sort of have fun with those ideas and try to do small compositions like this and kind of get that idea of dark, rich, straight tube color with the brush as well as some of that lots of uh, water and paint. You'll, you'll have a fantastic time painting and you'll be able to get a lot of variation in your paintings and be able to accomplish a lot of details. And again also we're always going to try to keep our buckets clean with lots of fresh clean water and we always try to keep our palette you know, clean. When we get a lot of water, uh, water and paint mixed on our palette, then it's a good time just to do a quick cleanup of our palette, like that, and we just tidy things up nicely, and then we can put more fresh paint on there, and it stays nice and clean and vibrant, and we get really great looking color and beautiful results here. All right, everyone. I hope this helps uh, with your techniques. Uh, great work. Uh, everyone and thanks again for all your comments I appreciate that um, it's always fantastic to hear from you and um, chat about watercolors and um, all that's going on with our art and um, hope we'll see you on the next uh, video in just a few days or so bye bye